Hello everyone, welcome all to this new session and today we are going to discuss MCQs on the Thorax. I am Dr. Ankit, an Autonomy Educator in our An Academy platform. Let us see some slides. These are Need PG Vitals, Last Sleep Marathon. We have this Crack FMG, it starts on 6th of Feb and Republic Day, so 28th of Jan is the last day where you can avail the offers. Use the code if you wish to, Dr. Ankit 10 numeric, that is Dr. Ankit 10. Let us see some of the Thorax MCQs. Here goes the first one. An unconscious three month old infant is admitted to the emergency after an automobile collision. An emergency tracheostomy is performed. There is an emergency tracheostomy. Which of the following structures most commonly at high risk of injury during this procedure? High risk of injury during an emergency tracheostomy of a three month old infant. Options are left brachiocephalic vein, left concarotid artery, vagus nerve and phrenic nerve. So if we understand this, yeah, they are going to do a tracheostomy, trachea being a midline structure. So obviously the out of these options, the structure that is in the midline and close to trachea, that is anterior to the trachea obviously, will be at higher risk. So if we just look over here, options number A looks like a better answer and we will see how because common carotid artery, the left common carotid artery, if you look at the arch of aorta, it gives off a brachiocephalic trunk which divides into these two and then the left common carotid and the left subclavian. Right? So left common carotid is not entirely in front of trachea though it is slightly lateral side. Same way we know that vagus and phrenic nerve are paired nerves. Vagus is a 10th cranial nerve and phrenic nerve is a, coming from the cervical uh, spinal nerves. So they are also present laterally inside the carotid sheet. So therefore these are all lateral structures but the left brachiocephalic vein, if you look at the venous structures, Suppose if we, if I show you a venous structure over here, just a second, just a second, yeah. So if we see a venous structure over here, and what we see is that we have a right subclavian vein, a right internal jugular vein, and a right brachiocephalic. Same way on the left side, we have a left internal jugular, left subclavian, but this left brachiocephalic is the one that crosses in front of trachea and the major arteries. Major arteries, I mean to say, branches of arch of aorta. So this left brachiocephalic vein is crossing in front of trachea as well as the branches of arch of aorta, probably the brachiocephalic trunk and the other vessels. And then these two brachiocephalic they need to form the superior vena cava, where we have an opening of the zygosin, that is arch of zygosin, and finally it pierces pericardium to open into the right atrium. Therefore, this structure over here crosses the midline from left to right side. Hence, hence it would be a better answer over here, option number A while doing a tracheostomy on a three month old infant. Let us see next one. 49 year old lady is admitted to the hospital with a difficulty breathing. Radiograph examination reveals a tumor invading the lung surface. And the tumor is anterior to the hilum of the lung. Which nerve is most likely compressed by the tumor to result in dyspnea? The lady has, she has a lung tumor which is anterior to the hilum of the lung plus she had dyspnea. So we should know basic things that what are the structures in the hilum plus what are the nerves related to the hilum anterior to the hilum the nerve is different posterior to the hilum the nerves are different understand esophagus runs posterior to the hilum and then it goes down into the, into the posterior mediastinum and the vagus is along with the esophagus so vagus nerve is posterior to the hilum while phrenic nerve which is lying anterior to the hilum as it goes down to supply the pericardium as well as reaches the diaphragm ultimately. Phrenic nerve lies anterior. So it is saying that okay lung surface anterior to the hilum. Structure involved could be phrenic nerve but does it justify the dyspnea? She was admitted because of the dyspnea only. Phrenic nerve is the only motor supply of diaphragm, the thoracic abdominal diaphragm. And the thoracoabdominal diaphragm is the main contributor of the inspiration expiration process. Particularly, the inspiration when the diaphragm contracts goes down, increases the intrathoracic volume. Therefore, it looks like a best answer over here. And phrenic nerve is the answer. It is the answer. With the root value, also remember C3, 4, and 5. C3, 4, and 5. Vagus lies behind. Intercostal nerves are obviously between the ribs. And recurrent laryngeal are branches of vagus so that will go, that don't reach the hilum. They are in the, you can say the left recurrent laryngeal nerve reaches up to the superior mediastinum. But hilum as a structure of the lung are in the inferior mediastinum, right? So therefore, phrenic nerve is the best possible answer over here. I hope it is clear. Let's see another one. Following a diagnosis of a breast cancer, 
A 49 year old lady underwent a total mastectomy including excision of the axillary tail. So that went up till the axillary tail of his pants and that was removed. Post op, the patient complains of dysesthesia. Dysesthesia means altered sensation, dysesthesia in the inner aspect of the arm and axilla. So this is the problem post op. Which of the following nerves was most likely injured during the procedure? Mastectomy including the axilla means they are telling that okay axilla was also involved in the operation and then there is this aesthesia in the inner respect of arm and axilla. So is the alarm involved axillary intercostal brachial or the lateral cutaneous nerve of T4? What is involved? Well, we should remember one thing that while doing axillary dissections for any procedure, while doing axillary dissections for any procedure, few nerves are prone to injury. And one of them is always our intercostal brachial nerve that is the lateral cutaneous branch of T2, second thoracic spinous. Then other nerves can also be involved, which could be the nerve to latissimus dorsi, known as the thoracodorsal nerve. Even the long thoracic nerve, nerve of bell or nerve to serratus anterior might be also involved. Right. Now these are obviously supplying the different muscles, but this is a totally cutaneous nerve. And that supplies the inner aspect of the arm and axilla. And we have the option also over here, option number C. That is the probable best possible answer in this particular case. So remember, axilla in mastectomy, obviously we have to dissect out the axilla lymph nodes, whereas the cancer has spread. And therefore, this nerve, a very thin nerve, it is actually very thin nerve. And you have to imagine also, like how. See, this is the arm. Now, try to think over it. This is the arm, right? That is the floor of axilla. Clear? This is the rib cage, but remember these are the upper ribs. Then as you go down, this, the ribs length increases. Right? These are the upper ribs, say first and second rib. What happens is that the intercostal brachial nerve, just give me a second. The intercostal brachial nerve, if we try to just a second, right? The intercostal brachial nerve is a branch of T2. So T2 will come down from here, it will come down from here, and it will go till here because it has to supply the inner respect of the axilla as well as the medial upper middle part of the arm. So this very thin nerve is passing from the medial wall of axilla, that is the ribs are the medial wall of axilla, traversing through the entire axilla and then reaching the later wall of axilla. So therefore it is obviously prone to damage. That is why the answer is the option number C, the intercostal brachial nerve. Right? I hope the point is clear. Okay. Let us move now to the next one. 30 year old male is admitted with a chronic angina. Coronary angiography reveals nearly total blockage of circumflex artery near its origin from the LCA. So there is nearly total blockage of circumflex artery at its origin from the LCA. When this artery is exposed to perform a bypass, what accompanying vein must be protected from injury? So what is actually the vein which accompanies the left circumflex artery? That is what they are trying to ask and this is what you guys need to answer. Options you can see these are all the veins, the middle cardiac, the great cardiac, the small cardiac and the anti-cardiac. Which vein accompanies the left circumflex artery? Okay, let us try to see over here. Suppose this is the outline of a heart if I may try to draw it. Imagine it to be the heart. Now this is the LC coming from the ascending aorta, the left post aortic sinus. And then the LC over here bifurcates into LCX left circumflex and a LAD, left anterior descending or anterior interventricular artery. These are arteries, just don't go with the color, these are arteries. With the LAD, there is a vein which is also going in the opposite direction, there is a vein which is going in the opposite direction, this vein is the great cardiac vein. And obviously it turns along and then passes along with LCA to finally drain into the coronary sinus posteriorly, then into the right atria. So therefore answer over here has to be the great cardiac vein, this is the a and S answer over here. Hmm? Look at the other options. The middle cardiac vein, it runs with the posterior interventricular artery, we should know that. Great cardiac already discussed, runs with the LAD, oblique LCX. LCX over here, left circumflex. The small cardiac vein on the other hand, it runs with the right marginal artery. Right marginal artery, that is actually a branch of the right coronary artery. The anterior cardiac vein is an independent vein, it actually drains from the anterior wall of RV, goes directly into right atrium directly. It does not drain into the coronary sinus. So therefore, answer over here is option number B, great cardiac. Let us see one more. 
सेवेंटी डे ओल्ड स्केड्यूल फॉर हिज रूटीन एनुअल मेडिकल एग्जामिनेशन ड्यूरिंग इको एग्जामिनेशन लार्ज मोबाइल स्ट्रक्चर रिजेंबलिंग थ्रॉम्बस इज आइडेंटिफाइड इन द राइट एट्रियम नियर द ओपनिंग ऑफ आई बी लुक एट द लोकेशन इन द राइट एट्रियम नियर ओपनिंग ऑफ आई बी सी आफ्टर केयरफुल एग्जामिनेशन द डॉक्टर आइडेंटिफाइज द लार्ज मोबाइल स्ट्रक्चर एज अ नॉर्मल कंपोनेट ऑफ द हार्ट वॉच ऑफ विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग स्ट्रक्चर कुड मोस्ट लाइकली रिजेंबल थ्रॉम्बस इन दिस लोकेशन विच स्ट्रक्चर ऑप्शन यू कैन सी द ट्राइकस्पिड वेल यूस्टेशन फेबेसियन और दोसोविस You get the location in the RA near the opening of IVC, but that is actually a normal component. It initially looked like a thrombus in eco. The eco's picture are not obviously not uh, real time and uh, exactly a replica, but they give a it's a good idea. What's the answer over here? Tricuspid valve is there, but it won't appear like a thrombus. It is between RA and RV, and yeah, it is close to the IVC, but it won't look like a thrombus. Obviously, the station wall are actually the remnants. can say the remnants of the ivc valve which are now rudimentary structure so this is the answer over here the station wall which is rudimentary wall initially during embryology it was a wall for the ivc no longer needed right thebesian walls are in the small walls uh these might be around the coronary sinus opening fossa wall is you all know is in the interatrial septum and we all know the embryology of it during formation of the interatrial septum So the station wall is a problem. Answer over here. It's normal component. It's normal component of the heart. And I was saying that they are near the openings of the IVC. Right? They appear like a thrombus. The basin wall they don't appear. They are simply uh, valve-like guard systems, flap-like. They don't appear like thrombus over there. But the station wall may appear slightly bigger in structure. Nine-year-old female is admitted to the hospital with a stab wound of the thoracic wall in the area of the right fourth costal cartilage. Which of the following pulmonary structures is present at this structure at this site? Sorry, where at the right fourth costal cartilage we have this manubrium, the body, xiphoid first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. The body made a little bit longer, but you can imagine. So this is the fourth costal cartilage, number four over here. It's a stab wound over here. The stab wound over here. What part of the lungs is it? Horizontal feature of the left or right lung, oblique feature of the left and or apex of the right lung. I guess the options are <laughs> making life a bit easier. They are saying it's the right cartilage, so you can obviously omit out the left one. Sometimes options are uh, options are like this. Apex of both the lungs are present. The top they go above even above the clavicle, not just the first rib. But first rib actually goes like this. So they appear over here, but they are also above slightly the clavicle. Are uh, around an inch of the clavicle. That's the position of apex. So what we are left with, obviously, the horizontal fissure of the right lung is the answer. And remember, the horizontal fissure of the right lung. First of all, horizontal fissure is present mainly in the right lung only, because right lung has three lobes, left lung has two lobes. You have to understand basic thing over here. That just a second. Yeah, you have to understand one thing that the right lung has three lobes. So imagine this is the right lung. That is the left lung with a Cardiac not. It will have a horizontal fissure. This doesn't have a horizontal fissure. Both will have a oblique fissure starting from behind. Then it comes comes down like this. Comes down like this. So what is surface marking of horizontal fissure? Actually starts at the fourth costal cartilage, right? And it will meet the oblique fissure around the fifth rib in the metaxillary plane. And this oblique fissure though starts at P3 spine on the back posterior. As it comes down, it reaches the sixth costal cartilage. So you can very well understand that the horizontal and oblique fissure. What is between them is the right middle lobe. So just remember over it will help you in remembering that four, five, and six, fourth costal cartilage, fifth rib, sixth costal cartilage on the right side is actually surface marking which includes the right middle lobe of the lung. Right? Here we only have the oblique fissure. So if we look back over here, then option. B is the answer. Option B will be our answer, right? Let's move to the next one. Okay, a fifty-eight-year-old lady is admitted to the emergency with severe dyspnea. Severe dyspnea. Bronchoscopy reveals that the carina is distorted and widened. Bronchoscopy was performed. It reveals that carina is distorted and widened. Enlargement of which group of lymph nodes is most likely responsible for altering the carina? We all know carina where the Trachea bifurcates. Where the trachea bifurcates into a right and left bronchi. 
this is the location of Karaina. It was distorted and widened. Some issue happened over here. They are asking which group of lymph nodes might do that. Is it pulmonary, bronchopulmonary, inferior tracheobronchial or superior tracheobronchial? Which group of lymph nodes can distort the carina? If you look at each option, obviously pulmonary will be inside the lungs. So obviously they are quite peripheral. This will be the location of pulmonary lymph nodes. Bronchopulmonary, remember trachea, then two bronchi, and this divides into under two, then it enters the hilum. This will left will enter the hilum. Now bronchopulmonary is actually a junction of bronchus entering inside the lungs. So bronchopulmonary are at the hilum. They are known as hilar lymph nodes. It is an it is another question in itself. Inferior and superior tracheobronchial. Now this is trachea, this is bronchial. They are saying we have two groups, superior and inferior. So superior must be higher up, inferior must be over here. Which is more closer to the carina, we can very well see and that would be our answer. Option number C, inferior tracheobronchial group, uh, group of lymphons would be our answer. Right? So guys, uh, let us see if we have anyone else or that's all for the day. I hope you enjoyed the session. And... Uh, that's all. We'll come up with more sessions. Probably the abdomen part will be our next small video. Thank you for your time.